so we're here at the Roblox Rally and there's absolutely nothing or most of it has nothing to do with Roblox. There's the test lounge the game lounge and then over there is the uh, conference area uh, I guess you so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get seats for the next conference I guess which is in three minutes so and his favorite professional sport to watch is Starcraft yeah Starcraft all right guys Our first multiplayer level of Crossroads is about 2,000 parts, so pretty small by standards. Larger levels, Brimstone Garden, maybe some of you have seen it. It's pretty big, it's pretty complicated, that's 10,000 parts. And even bigger is the Eiffel Tower level. If you've done the climb the Eiffel Tower, that's 15,000 parts. But none of these are really big enough. We need to do bigger than this grander, more complicated. So the history, over about five years, we've gone from about 2,000 parts to about 15,000 parts. So we've done good improvement, but we need to do better. So we had Telemon build us a jet, and he's gonna show us what we've come up with to fix this. So he fires it up. And now you can see the level. It is huge. And the, what's important to note is all the terrain, every little piece is individual parts. So each of these parts you can fly over, you can fly through, you can fly with pretty graders, throw up parts.
So once you've got your basic terrain, you can micro edit and make it exactly what, what, what you want in game. And you have a bunch of tools for that. So the easiest one is just creating blocks and see as you create blocks, we're smoothing them automatically for you. So you can just do any form that you like and we'll make it look good. And obviously, not only can you create blocks, you can remove blocks and smoothing will, will be applied on them. It's just a bunch of files, you can send it over email or any, any, any way you want. You can publish it somewhere and the other person will download it, put, put it in the studio folder and you're up and running. Now, Ross here will help me by uh, just showing what kind of cool stuff you can do with this. Hey guys, so you just saw a bunch of plugins already in the train demo. And now I'm going to show you some others that we've also been working on. So the first one's the roads plugin. You click on one point and then another, and it generates a road automatically. As you can see, uh, it also makes bridges, and if it goes through a mountain, it actually makes a tunnel in the mountain. So you can make up a network of underground tunnels all over the terrain, however you want. And this is actually pretty cool because in the past, you couldn't do this in the studio with just a script because you didn't know where the mouse was clicking or where it was moving or anything like that. Now with the plugin architecture, we actually have a way for the active plugin to know the location of the mouse. So you can do stuff like this, where you click and the tree gets generated. This plugin, the tree generator, is actually, was actually written by a user. He had a place where we generate random trees like every 10 seconds. And Telma converted this into a plugin in like five minutes. So any existing code you already have, you can convert it into a plugin like this really easily. And the last one is just a slider. You can set the lighting conditions in your place. Currently, you have to do this by changing a number. And it's kind of a hassle to like try different numbers, see what you like. So this just a simple convenience thing. You can easily write plugins that do this. In fact, it's so easy to write plugins, we're going to go over how to do it right now. It's just going to be calling create plugin. This makes an internal representation of the plugin in Studio. And as you can see right now, Studio looks the same as it always has. But when we call the next line, create toolbar, we have a blank toolbar that appears. Here the toolbar has one parameter. We can give it the name of the toolbar. And this is really cool because if you have several different plugins or like you're a pro plugin maker, you have a whole set, you can group them together on the same toolbar by using the same toolbar name. Now the next line, we're going to add the button by calling create button. Here you can set a name for your plugin, a tooltip that will appear when you hover over the button, and an icon. If, so as you can see, the button appeared right there called the block spawner with its own icon. And if you want a button with just text or just an icon, you can leave one of the parameters blank. Now, right now, currently we add a button, but it doesn't do anything when we press it. So the last part is there's a click event that gets activated every time you press the button. And we just put some code in there so that when that event happens, you spawn a part. So here's what Studio looks like now with our plugin right there. And when we click it, we make a part. And that's it, just four lines of code. I encourage all of you who are scripters of any level to try this. Put your scripts into plugins. It's very easy, very useful, and you can help other people make better fences with it. Now, next time. So what you guys just watched was uh, the studio plugins and terrain generator. Now what they're presenting is stamper parts, which uh, it's really boring, so I decided not to watch it. Um, but now we're going to go explore the rest of Roblox Rally. Oh, so right now we're upstairs. Uh, and I have to say, most of these things do not have anything to do with Roblox. Mostly just physics and science. Um, so hopefully they'll next year have a lot more to do at these conventions. I honestly consider this more of a uh, science uh, convention more than a Roblox convention, based on most of the uh, most of the exhibits here. As you can see, most of these exhibits are mostly 
not made by Roblox, uh, mostly made with signs. But there are some Roblox convention exhibits here. Uh, this is where you pick up a sandwich. There's the game lounge, as I said before, which they said had some technical difficulties. Uh, I kind of think these are. This is probably the only mine exhibit here uh, that's actually worth sitting down and watching. But I kind of think the only reason why I would come here now, uh, if I were to come here next year and it'd be the exact same thing, I'd only come just for the, uh, the press conference, or whatever they want to call it. Mostly because it gives the best information and uh, it's just all around. Oh, it looks like someone has a bigger camera than me. How dare they? So right now we're heading back to the uh, press conference area, the main stage. Um, and hopefully we're going to watch most of it. Hopefully it's something more interesting than the last uh, conference. So yeah. So sadly I just missed something really big. It was personal servers. I was eating my lunch and uh, I missed it. But I heard it's going to be Builders Club only and it's going to be like hosting your own server I think. Or maybe it's just like the game is a public game, but then you have like servers that you can have privately while other people can still play it publicly. But this feature is a uh, builders club only from what I've, what I've heard.